Wiggly. Welcome back to my channel, or if it's your first time here, please stick around. And today we're going to do something a little different, something I have never done before. So we're going to do a little get ready with me to go absolutely nowhere while we talk about authors wild and on social media, parasocial relationships, and writing negative reviews. I cannot do makeup. I am not pretending to know how to do makeup because I don't know how to use filters on my phone. You're seeing all of this raw ass chicken cut like face. I did not know need to see myself in this high of a definition. I am not built for that lifestyle. I don't have the faculties for that. My face has been waging a war against symmetry since the dawn of time and clearly that is a war we are losing. Now I know some of y'all are actually good-hearted people and you might be tempted to hop in the comments and be like, no, 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 you're so pretty, you're not like, shh. Let's face the facts here, guys. If I was a bad bitch, I wouldn't be in Gatineau, Quebec. And I certainly wouldn't be in a smaller town outside of Gatineau, Quebec. The defense rests their case. All right guys, so I went off camera to wash my hands because we're about to touch my skin and I cannot take any more risks with this skin. All of those things that you hear when you're young, wear sunscreen, do it. Because I'm 30 years old and I don't think I need to say anything more. We're going to start with some Elf Power Grip Primer. I've always wanted to do this, even though my phone won't pick it up, but uh, no, I feel official, so. I just wanna make a couple of disclaimers. Some of my products are higher end because I've come to the sad realization that sometimes the dupe isn't as good as the high-end products. That's against my cultural beliefs as a half Filipino. We are always looking for the best deal possible, but sometimes the $8 product is worse quality. Number two is throughout this incoherent rant, I might use totalizing or absolute statements. I'm not speaking about all authors or all readers or all anything, but if I use that language, it's just because I'm not a great speaker, but don't bother commenting it below. I beat you there. The power grip is gripping. It's got more of a grip than I do on my own life. Now we're going to do the brows and it is the NYX Zero to Brow Gel. I was influenced to buy this by TikTok. Y'all got my ass again. So some of y'all, if you're on TikTok, I'm not sure about Bookstagram because I just nearly took my eye out there. <laughs> Um, because I am not on Bookstagram, but anyways, Book Talk kind of popped off because this aspiring author who <laughs> had the confidence to put her username as future New York Times bestseller, honestly, I would pay for that type of delusion. She posted a video saying that if you rate a book less than three stars, you are the asshole. I already knew that and not just because my dad told me when I was nine. So get a little more creative. Really hit me where it hurts, okay? For those that do agree with that sentiment, the, the common argument is that, oh, authors put so much hard work into their books. Like, if you haven't written a book, you can't review one, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> Hold the fuck up here. So can I not comment on how the food at Olive Garden is prison adjacent because I'm not a chef? If I remember correctly, I do have taste buds. So therefore I have an opinion on how food tastes. Also the whole argument that they put so much hard work into this and we shouldn't be so negative. It's giving participation trophy energy. And what I mean by that is hard work does not equal good work. If I spend 800 hours trying to recreate the Mona Lisa and it looks like I had a stroke halfway through it, you don't have to pay me a compliment. It sucks shit, it is what it is. When you create art, and you put it out there to be judged, this is what occurs. Move along because it's all subjective. All right, this looks like shit. You know, they say brows are sisters, not twins, but like, honestly, mine look like they're from two different ethnicities at this point, so. All right, so this is the Anastasia Beverly Hill Clear Brow Gel, and yes, I know this is on the pricier end, but I've tried that NYX brow glue that everybody says is bomb. Unfortunately, it did not hold one single brow hair in place. These guys just got a mind of their own. To summarize, reviews are for readers and authors need to stay the fuck away, but unfortunately, this is kind of shifting, and I'm not really sure how like Goodreads has escaped the wrath of authors, to be honest, because they could get in there 
sometimes they do, but mostly it is just a reviewer space versus social media. Those spaces are not just for readers. They're for authors too. And it's not the author's fault. Like when I learned that publishers looked at an author's social media statistics and how many newsletter subscribers they have, I was like, Ooh, what? <laughs> because there is exactly zero correlation between an author's ability of building a social media platform and writing a banging ass book. Wasn't the whole point of being with a traditional publisher is the access to in-house marketing services that would give your book more exposure than if you were just doing it on your own. So why do I have to come with the clout? Isn't that your job? Now my job here is to get ready, but I'm clearly struggling. So now we're gonna do eyebrow, no, we're going to do the eyelashes and this is the Shiseido, I think, curler. That's not how you pronounce that. And yes, this one is wildly overpriced. But again, I find that it works best for my lashes. It helps prop these baddies up and I need all the help I can get because I have about six eyelashes per eye and they're pointing straight down. Ow, I just pinched my eyelid. So because authors have infiltrated these reader spaces, it has changed the dynamics between readers and authors and also has changed the way that readers review books. I'll get into that a little bit later, but now I'm gonna focus on why social media has kind of enabled or empowered in a twisted way, authors to just wild the fuck out. Again, I know that not all authors wanna be on there because publishers just decided that they don't wanna pull their own weight. But unfortunately, what we're seeing is a lot of them getting on there and then just off roading. Back in the day, if you wanted to market your book, you were limited to ads and author events that were very controlled by professionals. Now, anybody with a phone can just download an app and have access to millions upon millions of people and market themselves willy nilly however they see fit. And this is where things get a little out of control. Also, if I'm like looking everywhere, I'm trying to look through the lens, but then I'm just, I'll, I'll get there guys, okay? Anyways, uh, quickly, we're going to do concealer next. It's the Bye Bye Under Eye by It, but apparently you can put this all over your face. This is shade 20 medium neutral. Usually I just buy medium neutral for everything. I haven't used this, so. Fingers, toes, poochie lips crossed. So you have like different types of authors on social media. The ones that don't wanna be there are the ones who are usually just plug in those glorified PowerPoints of like their book cover and stuff, absolutely no shade. Like social media is very hard. You think, oh, how difficult can it be? You just set up a camera and talk. It's like, guys, do you know how fucking awkward it is to just talk to your phone in an absolutely silent room by yourself? Do you know how weird that is? I'm not shading any authors who struggle with their content. The more successful authors that you see on social media are the ones that share a lot of personal content. At some point, they seem to lose sight that this is a professional outlet for them and they are representing themselves professionally because at the end of the day, all of this content, whether it's about them at the farmer's market or it's about how many words they wrote that day whatever it is the end goal is to sell a product to you they want you to buy their books that's it so if you are selling a product to people there are certain professional boundaries and standards that you kind of have to abide by to make sure that you are attracting the most amount of people that you can to increase the likelihood of your book being purchased there are certain professional boundaries that you shouldn't overstep and one of them <laughs> that I thought we all agreed on as a community is not going after reviewers and just not making disparaging or demeaning remarks about your intended audience. Guys, what's happening here? <laughs> oh my God. I look like a reverse panda. Guys, this is medium neutral. Like who is this medium for? Like a panda? I don't know. All right, uh, we're gonna see it through. I don't know what it's gonna look like with foundation over it, but you know, we may be having a little giggle together, so <laughs> we move. 
And of course, I'm not saying like you need to be a robot and you shouldn't share anything. I think it just takes a lot of like self-awareness to know where to draw the line. But what I see a lot is as their accounts grow and these personal opinions that they're sharing that aren't directly related to their book are continuously validated by that audience, they start to get a little lost in the sauce. And, and that's because of parasocial relationships, which is a fucking disease, guys. <laughs> like a disease. Like report that shit to the CDC because it's making me sick. Yes, that's horrible. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. Anyway. <laughs> We're gonna do our next step, which is what the girlies call underpainting. I'm not sure if this actually does anything, but I just kind of like it. It's, it's kind of like a placebo effect, you know? This is the Rare Beauty Contour Stick in the shade On the Horizon. And guys, this is the second darkest shade. Am I the second darkest skin tone? No. Anyways, moments of silence for this beat that face me. Okay, like my skin always turns really red when I touch it. So I'm gonna just let it settle a bit, but like second darkest shade, guys. Okay. Now, if you don't know, a parasocial relationship is essentially when a regular, regular person, an average Joe, a fan, thinks that they have a relationship, whether that's like platonic or romantic with a media figure, a celebrity, an influencer, or whatever you wanna call it, despite never having actually interacted with that person beyond a surface level. And you'll notice that a lot of celebrities who are the most untouchable also have the most intense parasocial relationships with their fans. For example, Taylor Swift. It's like <laughs> the Swifties. If you have the audacity, the cojones to say, her music is just not for me. I can see how other people like it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Like you might as well just put your head in that guillotine machine yourself because they will come for you. And the reason for that is because she intentionally fosters this relationship with her fans where they feel like they know her. Like she cares about them and she values their opinion and that they're best buddies. So these girlies will straight come for your throat because they feel like out of a sense of loyalty, they have to stick up for their friend. You know, they, you, you can't slander their bestie like that. No, 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 no. So the bookish example of this is Frida McFadden, 100%, or as I like to call her, Frida allegedly McFraudulent. Frida owes all of her success and the fact that she was picked up by a traditional publisher to her Facebook group. She started this Facebook group, which she called Frida McFans. <laughs> And it has now grown to like almost 40,000 members. She would post in that bitch five, six times a day. It's kind of like when your friend texts you all day or they're sending you voice notes like it's a podcast. She wants to tell you what's going on in her life. So it's no surprise that the members of that group started to feel like they really knew her. And she would also ask like her followers for their opinions on things. She will comment on people's posts. So then when people get a comment from her, they feel like, wow, I'm interacting with a famous person and famous relative here, guys, let's, let's be honest. So then they make it their mission to have these so-called one-on-one -on -one interactions with Frida by continuously showering her with compliments. She has built up that community. And even more importantly, she has built up that blind adoration and they will throw themselves on the proverbial grenade whenever the dissenters appear. And we see it time and time again, when somebody naively comes into that group and goes, oh, hey, um, how come seven of her books sound like other bestsellers and the Frida readers will be all over that like white on rice and then five hours later, oop, post unavailable. Um, what are we saying with this? We're saying you look like a paint by numbers that is being painted by somebody who is colorblind. Okay. Mm. All right. So then next we're going to get into the foundation. This is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation in the color 2.5 medium nude. And yes, Beauty Blender makes foundation. Unfortunately, I did have to pay upwards of $50 Canadian so that my skin wouldn't look like a dry sponge when I put foundation foundation on it. So the Frida Ritas are deeply entrenched in the cult, I mean Facebook group, and now their delusion is so deep that Frida has begun to officially go off trail, okay? Because she <laughs> will say things that are so passive aggressive toward her fans, or just downright rude to be honest. And they will be doing Simone Biles level mental gymnastics to make what she's saying okay and not actually rude as fuck. Like for example, one time she got on there and she's like, I'm not going to do these podcasts anymore because 
who even watches these things. Like, of course I would do it if it was New York Times with Chris Hemsworth, but not these piddly, diddly, unknown, great value ass podcasts. No. And it's like, <laughs> Why the drive-by? And then people get in the comments, oh my God, you deserve all the attention in the world. NPR or bus, why aren't you on CNN? Frida for president. And then recently she posted about some ARC feedback that she got for her upcoming release, The Teacher, because she just won't fucking leave us alone. And some of the feedback was like, could you include a trigger warning because the teacher grooms the student in the book. So she gets on the old Facebook and she's like, guys, should I include a trigger warning, blah, blah. So it seems like to her fans that she is actually looking for their input and values their opinion. But then you get to the second part of that post and she goes, actually, I don't give a fuck what you want to say. I'm not doing a trigger warning because y'all a bunch of pussies and you should just expect the worst in any kind of thriller book. I don't give a fuck about your trauma. And then people are like in the comments going, my priest was grooming me from age three to 18 and I definitely don't need a trigger warning. People who can't read about inappropriate sexual relationships relationships need to toughen the fuck up. It's like, relax there, American Sniper, okay? <laughs> but the Frida Ritas, they will fold their own values and morals so fucking quickly just for Frida to give them a little like and say, how's that Kool-Aid taste in them? And then lastly, Frida was in the comments on somebody's post about how her books are so similar to others saying, how is this any different than a hockey romance author using puck or pucking in their title? And it's like, I'm gonna have to ask you to just level up your critical thinking skills a, a tiny bit because there's a difference from stealing somebody's entire plot to doing a little play on words with puck and pucking which is common hockey terminology but go off Ooh. <laughs> it's giving Voldemort <laughs> yikes anyways let's move on to another author because I think I made my case with Frida and her parasocial powers there another author that's guilty of this is Geneva Rose and Geneva Rose built up her account doing these little funny videos with her husband Drew past tense of draw so she had established this strong fan base and then Scott happened and the whole thing around Scott just demonstrates the power of those parasocial relationships. If you're not aware, Scott was a disgruntled reader who sent her an email and said the perfect marriage was so stanky I had to put on a hazmat suit just to throw it in the trash. And Geneva did not like that. Okay, fair. Nobody likes to receive criticism. Like I'm not acting ignorant to that. So she decided to share this with her little fans on TikTok. She posted the screenshot of the initial email with his entire first and last name in it and his last name is very unique so it was very easy for people to find him and they started review bombing his law firm luckily he was able to remove a lot of those reviews but then continued to talk about Scott for like nine months after the initial email exchange he was not coming after her on social media I don't believe he ever did he didn't seem to have any accounts to my knowledge he had stopped emailing her after the first couple of exchanges but she kept on going and that was like her whole shtick she got coho involved coho wrote like a blur for her new book that said so good even scott would like it and so it's like okay is anybody else kind of thinking that this is a little too much and for me when i was like yeah this has gotten a little too weird is when she made merch using his likeness so she has stickers that say scott's worst nightmare on them and it's like i'm not a lawyer but i don't think you can just use someone's likeness without their consent. So here's my little tinfoil hat conspiracy moment. Either Scott was in on it from the beginning and it was a marketing ploy and she cut him the check or she's doing a little beg for forgiveness later versus ask for permission now type of thing. As I said earlier that people with big accounts, they get lost in the sauce and as their opinions are continuously validated by this audience who's so enraptured with them, they start to think that every single thought that they cook up in their easy bake oven needs to be shared. They think it's the most intelligent thing that they've ever said. They think it's the absolute truth. And is that 100% hypocritical coming from someone who's sitting here talking about shit she has no idea about me? Yes. Anyways, so we're gonna carve out this beach ball face. There's no bone structure here, so this is really pointless. But this is the One Size by Patrick Starr made for shade bronze and sculpt trio in medium dark. Medium 
dark, guys. Um, the only way that I would be medium dark is if I was the last person on this planet. So anyways, we're gonna go in with the top shade here. It's called The Fix. And we just kind of dab that. And then we just do something questionable like this. Anyways, back to Geneva. So she made this merch and it's like, guys, we did not just make merch based on a cranky email from nine months ago. Like it, <laughs> she spent money making that merch. So what, people could dog pile on him and clown him collectively? Like what the fuck are we doing? How did that run? But it's not just the Scott incident in regards to Geneva. There was a mutual follower I had on, oh, sorry. Now we're gonna do Dragged for Phil to the bottom shade here to just further attempt to trick people into thinking I have cheekbones. So I had this mutual follower on Bookstagram and she had given her new book, You Shouldn't Have Come Here Two Stars. Then Geneva pops up on my timeline talking about this mutual follower, saying that she's obsessed with hating her and that she blocked her. And I was like, <laughs> hold on here. Old girl didn't even tag Geneva in it, nothing. She just said her piece on Goodreads and kept it moving. So now you know that Geneva is in those Goodreads reviews. Hold on, I feel like the lighting's getting shitty in here. Sorry, I turned on my ring light because it's getting pretty dark in here. I, I'm not sure if this is any better, but... Anyways, so I went into that comment section thinking like somebody has to call her out and say like, this is not the bee's knees, okay? But uh, unfortunately, I was wrong. It was just a bunch of her fans agreeing with her, calling the reviewer miserable and bitter and so rude and why are people like this? Which the call is coming from inside the house on that one. But anyways, and I was like, Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. She's reached that point where she is so gassed up by her followers because of this parasocial relationship that she feels like she can just do whatever the fuck that she wants. She can call her outside the line and her followers are gonna congratulate her on discovering a new form of art. So now kind of changing gears and talking about how these parasocial relationships impact reader behavior. Now that these readers have access to their favorite authors and they wanna be in their good graces, they wanna get reposted on social media, they wanna get a response when they slide in the DMs, all of that, it changes the way that they review the books. Because obviously if I like an author and I like having that access, then most likely when I pick up their future books, I'm going to review it more favorably because I wanna keep my position inside the hive, you know? And a recent example of this is Ashley Winstead with her new book. I saw that in her acknowledgement section, she had things like 30 plus books grammars. Now, anyone who wanna take a guess at how popular those books or grammars were? I just find it a little funny that everybody that she shouted out happened to have a pretty hefty follower count and therefore a big reach. But you know, it, it could just be a coincidence. All right, let's keep it moving here, guys. The face card, it stays declined. Yeah, they just cut that shit right up on the spot. Next, we're going to do some powder. This is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I don't even think Becca exists anymore. I bought this at Canadian TJ Maxx. So is it expired? Um, don't ask, don't tell. You know, ignorance is bliss, all that. So we just pop it on in there and then we just kind of swipe it on there all janky like under the eyes and then I don't know I just honestly just throw that shit all over my face because I'm so oily that the US military is about to invade me anyways um if you've made it this far and you're like holy shit shut the fuck up you are so annoying uh plot twist I'm about to become even more annoying so strap yourself in it's time to talk about my experiences with authors sliding in my dms and my approach to writing reviews. Now I really don't want to sound so far up my own ass that I don't even know what the weather is outside but that might happen so just know that that is not my intention. I'm not trying to like humble brag or anything here. I'm just giving my uninformed uneducated perspective for y'all. I don't have like a big account or anything so it's not like Coho's water sliding into my DMs or anything but on occasion I do get an author DMing me about a positive review that I wrote. Also, I'm going to be talking about the authors that have contacted me solely because I wrote a positive review about one of their books. I have made connections with other authors that I have not read any of their books. So those interactions are completely outside of their craft and this does not apply to them. Back to what I was saying. I am always super happy and flattered when an author messages me and they say, thank you so much for your review. And I've had amazing interactions with authors where they said like, hey, I saw that you mentioned a plot hole. What do you mean by that? And they'll take the time to explain their perspective to me and try to help me understand more. 
and sometimes I'm like, ooh, okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense, the math is mathing, and then sometimes I'll be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> it is what it is, that's just not how I'm interpreting that, and does that seem like really off kilter when the creator tells you their reasoning behind it? Maybe, but if you mixed mayo, Brussels sprouts, and jelly beans together and told me that was a decadent dessert, it doesn't mean that I see it that way too. So, as I say, I'm, I'm super flattered, I'm very grateful, but it doesn't mean that I owe them anything. If I decide to read another one of their books in the future, I am going to rate it as if I never interacted with that author before, as if I never will. Because what matters most to me is not being BFFs with somebody who wrote a book that I like, but being as honest as possible in my reviews so that readers can make an informed decision on whether or not they want to spend their hard earned dollars on that book. That's all that I really care about. Maybe I'm taking it too seriously because I ain't making a fucking dime off this. To be honest, I'm, I'm giving away several dimes doing this, but that's just my approach to reviews. Because I honestly feel bad, and yes, I am capable of feelings. If I'm towing the line on a review or kind of take my foot off the gas, and it does happen, I'm not perfect. I know it, it may come as a surprise, but the rumors are true. I am not perfect. So sometimes I may be riding the fence on a review, and if I see somebody pick up that book thinking that I endorsed it, Sorry, that's so obnoxious, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyways, and then they turn around and say, yo, this shit is so bad, I have officially given up reading for the rest of my life. I'm like, fuck, because I feel like I bamboozled them. I won't say that people will enjoy this book, and that goes for books that I may not have even enjoyed, if I truly don't believe that shit. Because I don't want people to spend their dollars on a book that I don't really believe in, just because I want a little DM from the author. That's that's not my thing, okay? So let's finish it out here. Let's do some blush because I'm looking like a fresh ass corpse and not fresh in like a good way, just like recently deceased. So this is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Bijou Brilliant Starstruck Splendor Blush and Eyeshadow Palette. Say that 10 times fast. And don't freak out, I know this is very expensive regular price, but this was 40% off plus an extra 10%. So I was like, don't mind if I do ski. Plus, this is giving me Palace of Versailles vibes, and if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a Palace of Versailles stan. Don't ask. Anyways, we're going to use this bottom shade here, which is called Coral Cosmos. Just gonna take a swipe, and then just kind of press that baddie in there, and uh, nothing has happened. So, all right, let's just keep packing it on there. As I was saying to everybody's surprise, I am not a perfect person. If I'm being completely honest, there's only like one author that I would go like full Seal Team 6 for, and that is Lindsay Kelk, because I just find her so funny. I love all of her books. Every time I read her book, it just gives me what I need. But I've never read a book from her that I didn't like. If I did, I, I don't know, guys. It would be pretty hard for me to get in there and just slam dunk on her. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. But other than that, um, I don't know y'all in the most respectful way possible. Now, what are we thinking? Okay, it looks like there are signs of life now. Yes, the blood is pumping through my veins, which is great or not, depending how you feel about me. Um, but I would guess if you're watching this deep in the video, you either like me or you're a very dedicated hater, which uh, hats off to you. And another scenario I might put the kid gloves on for my review and not just go absolutely hard in the paint would be for indie self-published authors. But don't get it twisted. This is not out of some sense of like parasocial relationship, false sense of loyalty, boo-boo. Um, oh, sorry. I'm going to finish this off with some highlighter and this is the Rare Beauty Enlightened Highlighter. So we're going to take a little swipe of that and we're going to see. Is it giving fresh crispy cream? No, it's giving absolutely nothing. Just like my father. Anyways. <laughs> okay, and I also like to just go up here, even though it does absolutely nothing, but it makes me feel fancy, so yeah. <laughs> God, this is wow. An influencer I am not. You get ready with me, girlies and makeup artists, you're different because I'm maxed out right now and I almost forgot the mascara. I was complaining about my struggle lashes and I forgot to bathe them in 20 layers of mascara. It's such a piss take that my husband has like the most luscious lashes of all time. Like what do men need nice eyelashes for anyways? So yeah, this is because in the self-published authors who are just trying to get their career off the ground, like their reach and their exposure is like so small that I don't want to be the person who makes their career dead on arrival. I'm not saying that I have that kind of power, yada yada, but you know what I mean. Like, 
like if you stumble upon this person's book and then you go look at Goodreads and there's only four reviews and one of them is this bitch who wrote a PhD dissertation on why this book is a crime against literature yeah you're probably not gonna be enticed to pick up that book regardless of what the other three are saying because you might also assume that it's just three other friends and this is the only real person who read this book i don't want to do that to them because it doesn't give them the opportunity to find their audience versus like a frida who has like thousands upon thousands if not hundreds of thousands of fans out there my one star review is not going to affect her bottom line it's not going to stop people from buying her books it's not going to stop her from being picked up by more traditional publishers it's not going to stop her from swagger jacking nothing versus me stepping on the neck of an indie self-published author that will affect their bag before they've really tapped into their reader base see i'm not going to be the first one who comes in here guns a blazing let's let a few more reviews trickle in and then uh you know or, or maybe we just pretend that we didn't read it at all a little amnesia trope you know whatever <laughs> i do feel kind of bad in those regards and is that logical is that the right thing I, I i don't know because i just don't know anything in general so you tell me what you think about that so in conclusion i am very annoying but i am also interested to hear what you think do you guys think that parasocial relationships are a poison? Do you think that some authors need to have their internet access revoked or just use burner phones with no data on it? I'm curious to hear what y'all think because I feel like it's becoming commonplace for authors to just absolutely make an ass of themselves online because they get a little too big for their britches type of vibe. Oh, also this is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Luscious Waterproof and the waterproof is major key because it is the only thing that holds a semblance of a curl otherwise it's just like wilted greens up here all right <laughs> oh no oh okay i'm gonna have to go downstairs and tell my husband to tell me i'm pretty make me get through the night <laughs> Okay, the final step here is a lippy, and actually I want to share something with you. It's, it is not my social interest doctor. I got this like Sephora's favorites thing, which included these five lippies, and four of them are full size, and it's like Glossier, Rare Beauty, Tarte, and then Charlotte Tilsbury, and then a mini of this Clarins lip oil, and these were $45 total. Like my ancestors almost rose from the dead to cop that deal themselves because they couldn't believe it. Like $45? That's like the price of just this lipstick if you bought it individually. But anyways, we're gonna go with the Glossier one because I feel like that's the most natural. All right, see, it's pretty natural. It's a pretty close match to my natural lips. So, <laughs> um, we have gotten ready to never show our face ever again. This is the final look. I'm thinking the concealer is a strong no. And we're also done with this video. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on everything that I said. Also, if you would like to see another one of these get ready with me, but maybe I like try to do some makeup challenge. Like I saw somebody who did this TikTok that was like makeup for people with bowling ball faces. Well, she said round, but. I feel like bowling ball is more apt for me. Um, I could do something like that. And if there's a bookish topic that you would like me to discuss, or if you want to email me at girlwiththepinkskimask at gmail.com and tell me, girly, never do that shit ever again. I hear you loud and clear, okay? Say no more. It's what you guys want. My life is in the palm of your hand or whatever. Anyways, this was humbling. <laughs> If I haven't scared you off and you would like to follow me on Goodreads or TikTok, all of my links are below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.